Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series of lectures on CH activation. In our previous session, we delved into the factors influencing selectivity in CH transformations. We examined the main pathways of CH bond cleavage enabled by transition metals, and I introduced the concept of directing group-assisted CH activation. So far, I have described only direct CH transformations of CH bonds located ortho to the directing group. But what about meta and para positions? With modern developments in directing group-assisted CH activation, it is now possible to selectively functionalize even remote CH bonds. For instance, there are four strategies available for metaselective CH transformation. The first one is based on the application of directing groups connected to the substrate through a special template. This template is designed so that the directing group appears in close proximity to the meta-CH bond, directing the catalyst to that position. The second approach operates only on substrates possessing a hydrogen bond acceptor. In this case, the catalyst is used in combination with a specialized ligand, which, along with coordination to the catalyst, can act as a hydrogen bond donor, as described here. Overall, this rather complex system positions the catalyst near the meta-CH bond that is being activated. This strategy has some similarities with the application of transient directing groups. The following strategy is based on the Catalani reaction, which you may recall from the lectures on cross-couplings. The key point of the Catalani reaction is that the addition of norbornene to aromatic systems is reversible. If a typical directing group is present in the molecule, the first step of the process involves directing group-assisted orthoalkylation with norbornene. Instead of beta-hydride elimination, the formed intermediate undergoes another CH activation sequence, followed by the elimination of norbornene. The described sequence leads to the formation of a meta-substituted product. The final approach is based on the application of ruthenium parasimine complexes. In some cases, cyclometallation products of ruthenium are quite stable and can have an activating effect on the substrate. In the product of cyclometallation, the CH bonds of the substrate indicated in red are sterically hindered due to the directing group and the ligands on ruthenium. Therefore, the second molecule of the catalyst can only functionalize the meta-CH bond indicated in blue. Except meta-functionalization, the strategy based on the use of specialized templates and directing groups was recently extended to para-CH functionalization of aromatic systems. Now, let's briefly go through some specific examples. The template strategy for meta-CH activation was developed by the group of you at the Scripps Research Institute. Their initial paper was published in 2012. They have developed two directing groups, both suitable for palladium-catalyzed meta-CH olefination. A short optimization was required for this directing group, eventually indicating that the best meta-selectivity can be achieved when R1 and R2 are isobutyl and tert-butyl groups, respectively. The substrate scope is presented here. Following their report, it should be mentioned that the reaction works well for a wide range of substrates, producing corresponding meta-olefination products and good yields. They successfully applied their strategy for the late-stage CH functionalization of the commercial drug baclofen, although in this case, they obtained a one-to-one -one mixture of mono and disubstituted products. The approach based on the hydrogen bonding of specialized ligands and the substrate was developed in the group of Kanai at the University of Tokyo. They conducted studies on iridium-catalyzed CH borrelation on amides and related hydrogen bond acceptors. To enhance the selectivity of the reaction toward the meta position, they screened a number of ligands as described here. The table presents not only the yield of the product, but also the ratio of meta and para-substituted products. The best meta selectivity was observed when using the ligand with R equal to a cyclohexyl group. The overall yield of the product was further increased by replacing the solvent hexane with paraxylene. In here, one can observe the scope of the reaction. Their strategy proved successful not only for substituted benzenes but also for heteroarenes. Hydrogen bond acceptors such as amides, esters, and phosphonates were applied. The role of hydrogen bonding in the selectivity of the reaction was also examined. Any manipulations involving the positioning of the urea subunit significantly decreased the selectivity. Likewise, the replacement of hydrogen atoms with alkyl groups in the urea subunit also led to a decrease in selectivity. The approach based on the application of norbornene was primarily studied in the group of you. In their recently published work, they examined palladium-catalyzed meta-CH amination using derivatives of hydroxylamine. It is worth mentioning that, instead of norbornene, they used a derivative of norbornene indicated in red. 
The researchers found that the reaction proceeds well only in the presence of pyridine-based ligands. Among others, the underlying ligand showed the best efficiency. The exact function of the ligand is not clear, and overall, compared to traditional cross-couplings, the role of ligands in CH activations is not well understood. After optimizing the reaction conditions, they study the scope and limitations of the process. In general, the reaction proceeds well for a wide range of substituted RNs, producing corresponding amination products with good yields and selectivity. In the same paper, they also described meta-CH alkylation of RNs using a similar strategy. For this new transformation, they changed the pyridine-based ligand and applied alkanil bromides as coupling partners. For meta-CH activation enabled by cyclometallation, let me share the work conducted by the group of Ackerman from the University of Göttingen. In their 2017 publication, they explored ruthenium-catalyzed difluoromethylation of various RNs. The study revealed that difluoromethylation can be achieved using a variety of directing groups. The most promising results were observed with pyridines, pyrimidines, indazole, and pyrazoles. Interestingly, applying the same strategy made it possible to introduce monofluoroalkyl groups. Furthermore, they successfully extended their strategy to purine derivatives. Difluoromethylation proved effective for purines with a protected sugar. This concludes the strategies for meta-CH functionalization. Now, let's explore an example of selective para-CH transformation. The strategy based on specialized templates and directing groups was extended to para-CH functionalization in the group of MITE from the Indian Institute of Technology. They investigated the palladium-catalyzed CH olefination of derivatives of phenol, as described here. Initially, they screened several templates, including control experiments without directing groups. It was found that unprotected phenols are not reactive, while protected phenols can be olefinated, though with poor selectivity. They observed good para-selectivity using the specialized template with a cyano group, which acts as a directing group for the catalyst. On this slide, one can observe the scope of the reaction. The brackets present the ratio of products with para-selectivity over others. The reaction performs well with a variety of substituted RNs and Michael acceptors. They demonstrated that the template with the directing group can be removed through acid-catalyzed hydrolysis and later reused for another substrate, as described here. So far, I have shown you only examples in aromatic systems, as the functionalization of remote CH bonds in aliphatic systems is far less studied. In this context, the work by the group of Sanford from the University of Michigan is unique and highly promising. They successfully developed proper conditions and directing groups for the palladium-catalyzed CH aerylation of aliphatic CH bonds located at gamma or other remote positions. Another noteworthy finding was that, for some cases, the functionalization of remote positions was only possible in unstable conformations of cyclic systems, such as the boat conformation of piperidine presented here. The reaction conditions were optimized for this bicyclic amine, and part of the optimization table is presented here. The best directing group turned out to be the amide possessing a perfluorinated aniline. To minimize the formation of intramolecular amination byproducts, the silver salts were replaced by cesium pyvolate, as silver, among other roles, can act as an oxidant, promoting intramolecular amination. Following the optimization, they screened the scope of aryl iodides. The yields were moderate, but the regioselectivity and chemoselectivity of the reaction were exceptional. Additionally, they explored the scope of cyclic amines, which was quite impressive. Although the yields of the products were not very high, and in some cases, they observed double aerylation, hopefully, in the near future, we will see some extensions to this chemistry. To sum it up, in this lecture, you have been introduced to the main concepts applied for the selective CH functionalization of remote positions. For aromatic systems, it is possible to design specialized templates for directing groups and ligands, guiding the catalyst to the metaposition. Alternatively, metaselective CH transformations are achievable via the modified Catalani reaction or through cyclometallated intermediates blocking the ortho positions. The template strategy for remote CH functionalization can be extended to para positions, and CH activation at remote CH bonds of aliphatic systems is also achievable. These were the main modern directions in CH activation. I encourage you to proceed to the concluding lecture of the module where I will describe selected applications of CH functionalizations. Thank you for your attention.